you. Here goes Minx of the Blue Sea. You know what time it is. Oh, man, it went down. Oh, it went down. I woke up to the greatness this morning, and oh, it's going to be a crazy week, and I got a lot of stuff going on, but um, I'm excited, man. We, we, we're here. You know, we had a little break, but we're back at it again with the, the next chapter of, of the increasing greatness of Wano, man. <sighs> all right, let's get into it. So, uh, first of all, you know, we hit the, the, the cover page for the one time, and we see our boy Rob Lucci in, in the Gucci. <laughs> Looking fresh next to Stussy. I think that's yeah, that's the last time actually we've seen Lucci is uh in outside of the movie, right? Outside of Stampede. Last time we seen Lucci was during the Return of the Reverie arc when he slammed Leo into the ground. And we're reintroduced. Yeah, so it's been a minute. That was quite a while ago. Um interesting. Interesting. Good to see Lucci. So, um, of course, we're back at the rooftop, and things are going down, right? We see Big Mom on standby, like some kind of OP, RPG, spellcaster, sorcery type, just being Big Mom. And like I've been saying time and time again, right, the most terrifying thing is the unpredictability of Big Mom, and she's just too strong to deal with, and like... It's just, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I'm not surprised, though, right? Because it's, it's Big Mom. Like, she's the strongest woman in the series. It's never even been disputed at uh, any point. Did anybody ever think that it, that she wasn't? But um, just to see her do minor things in this chapter is just like, man, we should have got smacked in Whole Cake Island. Like it, it should have just been an absolute disaster, <laughs> a natural disaster, as we find out in this chapter. But um, you know they going in on Kaido. We see some nice stuff. Like we knew we was gonna see Gamma Knife, right? That just made sense. Like why wouldn't you use Gamma Knife? But also, um, if we're seeing this stuff very early into the fight i don't think it's just because um they don't have anything stronger right i think in each of them will see some sort of awakening possibly because i just think that's what you need um to deal with two yonko i think even if big mom wasn't wasn't there they'd still have issues because although they might sort of have a way to deal with kaido's invulnerability um, it doesn't make them within themselves strong enough to just deal with him, right? Um, if any of them get hit at any time, they could be out of the fight. You know, he's one clap Kaido still. Um, that's why I call him because it's one and then it, you're done. That's it. You know, it happened to Odin, it happened to Luffy before. So, you know, just always remember that. But he's in dragon form. And up until this point, um, Dragon form just seems to be either his laziest form, I guess you could say, because to better fighters, his Dragon form is not really that big of a deal, right? Um, if there's no civilians you have to protect or anything like that, um, him being in Dragon form just seems to be whatever. You know, he's still Kaido, but in comparison to when he's in his... Um, I don't want to, you know, his normal humanish form, uh, so to speak. He just seems to be a bit more formidable. Like he's actually taking things a bit more serious. Although in this chapter, he might have. Maybe there's an increase of durability was it when he's in dragon form, I'm assuming. So maybe that's just something he does to either recover, you know, through the fight. And he kind of uses it as like a, a, a stem shot or something, a health regen pack or something, full restore, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, because it just seems like it's it's not, I don't know, I, I just don't find it all that impressive. Like it looks cool, but 
other than scabbards, like, I don't see you, like, Kaito in dragon form against Shanks, I don't see him having any advantages, right? Like, none of that stuff is probably a- applicable to top tiers, like, dragon form probably gets washed by Kaido, you know what I mean? So, um, we'll see if Kaido decides to go back um, into his hum- humanistic looking form and uh, start clapping, because... Um, right now, to me, he's, he's on play time. And we even see, um, you know, I'm going to get to the big mob part in the end because I think there's an important situation going on here in this fight that um, you may or may not realize uh, about big mob. And um, it'll make sense when I get to it. Now, you see, I'm dancing around the most important part to me, and that is uh, my man Zoro. We'll get to that. But I wanted to talk about some of these moves uh, from Killer and um, and from Kid, which I'm not, I don't know. Maybe you could argue that because Kaido was being damaged when Kid threw him, it may have done something to him. But regular blunt damage, right? This dude jumped from Sky Island, so I don't understand why um, Kid's suplex or whatever you want to call that uh <laughs> power bomb or whatever he tried whatever he did to kaido i just don't understand um why that would really do any i feel like kaido has hurt himself more on purpose than what kid did because that's just a it just seemed like a physical attack and um i don't understand yet if kid has rio just because of the way he responded to luffy's and rio so i don't know if that's just you know I'm not sure what's going on there, but I know Kid has some probably broken awakening because of uh, other stuff that magnetism can do, including dealing with electricity. So I'm sure he has other means, right, that we're not aware of that give him an advantage, whereas opposed to Law and Luffy and, and Zoro, we already know why they have advantages. And to include Killer now, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, when I first saw Sonic Sight, uh, I thought about that old theme song, the old Sonic cartoon, you know, uh, what is it? Sonic, he can really move, <laughs> Sonic, and I just pictured Sonic spinning, I don't know why, um, <laughs> I don't want to sing too much of the song, I get DMCA from some studio that doesn't exist anymore, right, but I know you know what cartoon I'm talking about, but that's what I thought about, and it's, it's, it's an interesting technique because of um, something I've thought about, about how the power system works. And you've heard me in previous videos bring this up before about frequencies. And how frequency seems to be um, a connection between some of the different power systems if you look at them as a frequency and not what they are. Think about it like um, the whole power system is YouTube, right? and every person you're subscribed to that's a different frequency so although they all operate under the system of youtube right they're all their individual things that's why like hockey can interact with devil fruits and sea stone can interact with devil fruits and there's possibilities of how hockey interacts with sea stone right and then you think about big mom's fruit being a soul ability one of the reasons she immediately knew that something was going on with Inma is because of her so-so fruit. Is not be, I mean, I don't think any of us think Big Mom is proficient with observation hockey, right? And that's one of the reasons, like, it's probably good in the sense of her volume, right? And I don't know if her being able to communicate with her homies is just a byproduct of the fruit ability itself or maybe some mixture of observation, but... I don't think any of us think that's her proficiency. So, and if you think back to the fight with Broken and the fact that Zoro was able to cut Prometheus, little stuff like that. Remember, Big Mom is not in Lin Lin mode right now. She's in her normal um, 100% awareness. So when she's like this, this is when she's terrifying because she's still unpredictable, but there's no nerf in her right now. And then even the previous chapters, what was she doing? She was charging her powers to the point where she was like, I'm not even going to, I got to charge up. I can't deal with you right now, Marco. I don't, we just got too much going on right now. 
right? Since she goes straight to the rooftop. But in that meantime, that's what she was doing. So clearly she was charging up to use these type of abilities. And like I said, her awareness right now, she immediately saw Enma was like, hey, look, <laughs> if you can't dodge a ball, <laughs> My man Zoro, Lee's going for game. My man Zoro is going for the for the OTK man. He's he's out here trying to reduce life points to zero real quick. I mean, you know, all respects to one clap Kaido. Um, I don't think that would have killed him, but it show sure would have he would have had the cleanest shave he's ever had in his life because let's not forget the size of Onigashima, right? It's massive, um, to the point where it makes Kaido look small. So that horn that Zoro just clipped off in the anime, best believe there we're gonna you already know. Wano's been going in for Zoro scene. So um I think we all know what time it is with that. And just the look on his face and even him like the same move that low div Kiku, right? Like Zoro Kiku basically let it trying to let it be known, like I dude, I am not one of the scabbers. Like <laughs> I, I can I can I can cut your your bar blast just like Kimo. I I mean I'm a better swordsman than all of them. You know it's just not what time it is. You, know, like, you really have to worry about it. He was really going for the kill. My man was going for the kill immediately. I was hyped when I was seeing that. I'm like, yo man, we out here in Zoro D sword man. I know Oda knows about the ZKK. So uh, there's no way Kaido was gonna get hit with that, right? And there's, there was just no way. But that just means he's going to get hit with it later. That, that's all that means. Like, he's same pose and everything, flying dragon. Come on, man. Like, I, before, I thought it was going to be Rashomon. Um, because I think um, how, I don't want to say a huge deal, right? But um, Nitoryu, the two-sword style, is like a known thing in Wano. But I also think Zoro could use Santo Ryu to finish whatever it moves. Like, if he doesn't use that same move, maybe he does that, but with three swords, right? Because Ryuma had a one-sword style, right? Then you had next, you had Odin with a two-sword style. I've talked about this before. So it only makes sense to, like, either whatever moves Zoro would use would be either a tribute to one of them, or if it is a Santo Ryu move, it might be one we've never seen before. Um, just because there's been two times in the series where, you know, off the top of my head, right, Ryuma and Mihawk responded the same way to Santa Ryu, you know, kind of like it's a, looks like a joke, right? And we've seen in Wano for the, even since post time skip, right? We haven't seen a lot, a lot of three sword for one reason or another, right? He's either lost one or, you know, you know what it's been like. So I'm not quite sure if maybe, and then you add into the fact uh, from one of the cover chapters, I think it's back in the 600s or so, the cover chapter where they go back to Shimosuke Village and they see, um, they show uh, Koyashiro with the, the younger generation and they're all practicing Santaryu. So I don't know if there's, if that's the route that's going to go, maybe that will be the connection, right? Because the Shimasuki still hasn't come into play in, in Wano yet, other than being named, right, as one of the clans. So, if that's the, like I said, if that's the route that they're going, then it'll be a Santoryu move. But as, um, because he's using Enma, I, um, it makes me think that he's going to be using a two-sword move. So, I don't know, you know, that's... That's what I think, anyway, as far as the Zoro part. And, of course, he got thunderclapped because here's the thing, right? I know they're not the exact same thing, of, of, of course, because I'm sure some of the people are going to bring it up. I, I, I looked myself because it was the first thing I thought of, right? Uh, the Shiva's wrath and all this stuff and um, the, uh, the mythos behind um, Asher, you know, authors, Asher, like, there's already a lot of stuff about that to begin with, right? So, even though they're not the same, I feel like it was used on purpose to make us think this way, right? Because that's not... For the common phrases that are in the One Piece universe, right? They don't really talk about... There's not a lot of people with religious uh, aspects to them. 
Like you have Mihawk, right? And then you have now Big Mom because of the Shiva's wrath thing. But before then, her quote unquote um, godly mythological ties were to Elbraf, which is North's, you know, Norse uh, mythology. So for this to come back in, into play, it just says, right, we kind of assume he's going to need Ashura anyway, right? If you're using it on a person who just got their devil fruit and, and, and Kaku, um, you I'm, you need it against Kaido. It's not even, to me, it just doesn't, <laughs> you know, it just makes sense, right, that he would need it for Kaido. If not Kaido, then who? There's nobody else in the series other than Admirals at that point that we're aware of, right? Um, and, and other Yonko crews, other than that, like you're not using that on fodder. If he hasn't been using his good moves on fodder, why would he start now? You know, that's kind of how I think about that. But um, yeah, man, like Big Mom is terrifying. And I, like, if Judge got thunderclapped, Zoro and Killer are fine. You know, Law too. Because people, the, what I want to say, the bias on law is, like, he has Kakashi syndrome, you know? Like, he has stamina is weak, but his endurance is not. Um, if you pay attention, really pay attention to everything he endured in Dressrosa, and this man shouldn't be alive. Not to mention when he was a kid, you know, having the disease and all that stuff. So his resilience is not something I've ever disrespected. That's why I don't try to kill that character off in particular, just because... Um, Law's will is a lot stronger than I think what the series even get, gives it, give him credit for, right? So, um, I don't know. I'm not really in, in on that crew uh, of, of that. But ZKK, you know, I know Oda knows. He has to know by now. There's a lot of stuff. There's no way, right? I know we're in our own little bubble, but come on, man. He knows about these little things. Like, his editors research stuff all the time. Um, I'm not assuming it's all, like people in japan because it's a global series at this point they understand that everybody all over the world likes this, this series so um it just wouldn't make any sense to me but um we're gonna see it coming and i just keep thinking about big mom man she's terrifying like she just unleashed a wrath of everybody sit down and shut up so this is what i want to talk about with big mom if you notice in this fight, okay, from when he first got, when Luffy first clapped him, right, in 1002, or was that 1001, Big Mom's reaction was like she was disappointed. And I'm starting to see a trend now with this chapter, right, telling him to dodge, because if he would have got hit by that, um, like I said, it wouldn't have killed him, but I think it would have been really bad, because that was his face. I don't care how durable you are, taking a whatever strength of that attack was to your brain is probably not good for you. And it's a slice. And it was it was it had some intention behind it. Zoro was trying to end the fight today. <laughs> there is no next turn. Like he was on that. So um but I think because of what Big Mom thinks about reputation, right? The whole reason she wants to go after Luffy is not necessarily like him challenging her. Like, even back in Fishman Island, like, oh, you're talking trash over the Din Din. Like, you want the smoke. Okay. Because to this point, Luffy is still not really f even attempted to um, face Big Mom one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he's a, made an emphasis about Kaido first, then her. But it's like, you might have to deal with her right now. Um, I still think it'll be law. Because his abilities seem more in tune to deal with the soul soul fruit. And like I was talking about with frequency earlier, um, if anybody's fruit operates on a frequency, it's definitely a law. Because it's just it's just it doesn't even make any sense for um one piece, right? How broken his fruit is. <laughs> so I mean, um, you know. And then now with Killer having these maybe sonic like attacks. I'm not sure if that's going to trigger something with Big Mom. Because if you remember back in Whole Cake Island, when Mother Caramel's picture broke, it caused her to release her voice, uh, conquerors through her voice. So I don't know if maybe sound waves could do something to her too. Because um, I don't know, maybe that's just her reaction um, to being damaged 
because she only she's damaged herself as we've seen so far um during that time when she was having a, I guess an, you want to say an emotional breakdown because so far that has been consistent in the series with damaging Yako um from Whitebeard right um when Squardo stabbed him um if you think about with Kaido was his emotional situation like he got a headache from jumping off Sky Island and he was probably drunk, you know, and he's always on some emotional stuff, like even a chapter with the scabbards, um, Odin's aura, you know, Odin's vibe, Odin's uh, technique triggered some emotional response in him, and boom, he receives damage. So um, it's possible that that move that that killer used on Kaido might um, be used towards Big Mom. At, it's possible. It might not come up at all, but that's the only thing I was thinking of because we know what type of ways you can fight Kaido now, right? One of them we've been known was Rio as soon as it was introduced. Like, oh, this is how you do on to let into another extent, Big Mom, because you probably need Rio to damage her too. Um, most characters don't have the brute force. Like, we haven't seen it yet. Kaido's probably the only one, or Shanks, or somebody, you know, somebody of that tier of physical strength and then even then we still haven't seen her we've only seen her damage herself when she scanned her knee you know so i I, like this stuff is doing these things to kaido i just don't know if one thing i did like that they brought up though so i'm getting kind of sidetracked kaido's speed when big mom told kaido to dodge he dodged immediately and once again, it's this thing where the bias of bigger characters being slow, you just throw out the window because that it's like Smoothie said, logic does not apply to the Yonko. And I do think that's one of those statements that put in the story to also remind us, stop applying logic to these Yonko because they defy logic. That's the whole point, right? Some people in the verse have to defy logic. It just is just like real life. There's plenty of people out there that, you know, survive plane crashes and just all this stuff that divides logic where rules say you should be dead or something and nothing happened to them. So these things happen in, in our world all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if that logic defying moment comes with Big Mom. I don't think it's going to come with Kaido. But like I was saying about Big Mom, I think she may, I don't want to say betray Kaido because I don't think that's actually what she's on but I do think she may get mad and try to fight him because he keeps losing face and that's the one thing Big Mom cares about is reputation like I was uh, before I got sidetracked that was what I was trying to get to was her whole point for wanting to deal with Luffy is her reputation was damaged in the newspapers because of what Morgan said that's the only reason why she wants to kill Luffy. It's not because she didn't even say anything about him messing up the wedding because she probably still doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like she only fo- she's only focused on one thing, her reputation, which is interesting coming from a person who nobody talks about the rocks. Their reputation doesn't even exist. And as far as we know, they've probably been the biggest threat in the series. That's not the Gorose. So for them not to have a reputation yet, Big Mom, that's a part of her 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 mentality is she has to be known as x right x doesn't happen to me this would never happen to me look what's happened to you kaido you know kind of like that mentality and then how she refers to him as a little brother right like that kind of relationship or um even for back in old kick island when she told him you can't defeat that thing it's like because maybe in her mind even she knows i can't just straight up even though she said to him, I'll come kill you, that might have more to do with her fruit ability than her just having the strength to just beat him. Like something weird condition that only she's maybe akin to or knowledgeable about. Some condition has to be met to de- to defeat him in the first place, let alone take his life. And since she's never tried to take his life before, it's like, well, why would she? I think that's just her talking tough. Like, she, that's how their relationship is. She has to talk to him like that. But I actually don't think without the soul fruit, she probably has no way of dealing with him either. So, what she may do, though, is hurt him. 
like, oh, you know, she just maybe she goes into a rage, not like in a sense of like her hunger pangs or, you know, the return of Lin Lin, but her rage about you're Yonko, you know, you're making us look bad. These, these not no supernovas shouldn't be doing this to you. You know, I've seen you fight this person and that's the person that we get some kind of backstory on. That's when we get the backstory on, on rocks that we've been waiting for. Um, it might be because of Big Bomb, like saying, you know, what Kaido was and what we were and how you've fallen apart. And now, you know what? I might as well be the pirate queen, you know, because you just don't have it no more. Like some, you know, I could see something like that coming. Um, we'll see how she responds in the next few chapters if he doesn't do something impressive, seeing as how he told her to stand back. And then it's just like, well, if I didn't intervene, you may be severely wounded right now. You know, similar to how Zoro tells Luffy, like, hey, we need to shape it up out here in these Yonko streets, man. It's not what you think it is because he's one one clap and it's over. So we, we got to be on our A game. And then now it's like Big Mom is even telling Kaido, like, you, you're you underestimating these cats. I don't even like them. I know we could kill them, but I'm not going to underestimate them. And you're seeing that characteristic from a character like Big Mimu. It's good to have back in the um it's good to have that mind frame back with someone like Big Bob because up until now her seriousness only pops up in like a few areas since her introduction. One of them being with her acquiring judges technology. She was really serious about that and then look what happened. You know what I mean? And then now this. She's serious right now, so um it's it's going to go down. I don't think um Obviously, like I said, the supernovas, they're fine. Um, we don't expect nobody, to, if you expect them to just shown in their way through this one, um, I think we're going to be disappointed if that's what you're thinking, you know. So um, I would probably throw that out the window at, at this point in the story. Regardless of what you think the outcome is going to be, um, the presentation of it is going to be glorious because it has just been going, I cannot wait for that. Um, this to get animated is going to be it's going to be like movie level, straight up movie level. Like some parts of Wano have been movie level. Like I'm not even a huge animation person. You know, I just watch it. I'm like, oh, that that was great. You know, a lot of times I can't tell the difference between like, you know, when something looks clean. Right. But, you know, as far as transitions and, you know, tone and all that, I don't I'm not always tuned in to, to that part. But I've, I have noticed a difference in Wano. They like sometimes I feel it feels like I'm watching Kenshin or something, you know, or, or any of those older animes because of the graininess, I guess you could call it. I don't know, but I've enjoyed it. I think it's been it's been pretty dope. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that stuff. Like I said, Big Mom being the, the wild card is, as usual, right? Um, that I'm just saying, man, look out for her attitude if it starts to get more aggressive. Each time Kaido takes some quote unquote attack or an L or whatever you want to call it. And uh, we'll see how she starts to behave right after each one. Um, I, I've loved the fact that we haven't cut away from this fight. I mean, we're going to have to cut away at some point because it's clear that there's other stuff going on. But we've got uh, quite a couple chapters in a row. And just, just straight here. This is what you want. I'm going to give it to you. And then I'm just going to start off 2021 on some. On some <laughs> like, I don't even know. You know, I've been at a loss for words because, like, we're finally getting what we wanted. You know, not that we don't want the world burden and other stuff. But this is what we want, man. They, it's been years. This is what we want. And. You know, we're getting what we want. I, I don't have any complaints whatsoever. Uh, just like I said, watch out for Big Mom, man. Because, like, Kobe, uh, she's a warrior. <laughs> Big Mom is a warrior. <laughs> no, I don't mean Steph Curry. So, uh, y'all be safe out there and enjoy your weekend. No break next week. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll see some of you online somewhere here and there. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm pretty sure I'll have something maybe Monday or Tuesday, especially because of this big mom thing. And um, I'll just talk to y'all then. All right. Peace.